Let's desk. Thanks, Riv. Now, guys, that was a commanding win by LMQ, and yeah. they now have first place all to themselves. Zyrene, are they there to stay? Man, you asked me this back at Super Week. I think LMQ is the number one team right now. Big thing about them, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but eight out of the nine weeks, they have been tied or in first place so far this split. They have always been there, except for week two, where they had a little bit of a slump. They're very consistent in their play, and people actually don't realize how good they are. Xiao Wei Xiao has been three-time weekly MVP this split, and nobody else in the NALCS has gotten more than one this split. They are a huge team that has a ton of aggression and individual skill that transitions into a lack of hesitation in team fights, and they come out on top consistently against every team. So is that coordination and teamwork freak the reason that they're able to stick with kind of more conservative uh, conservative is the wrong word more uh usual, usual picks when when going into champ select is that what's allowing them to do that and then still come out with these wins yeah I, when i kind of first came in i thought okay a lot of lmq's early success is because they have the undisturbed roster they're just on the same page with anyone else and the rest of the teams the clgs the tsms they'll just level up throughout the season and do fine Turns out the other teams are leveling up, but LMQ continues to improve. They find new ways to get better, which is incredibly impressive to me. And, and yes, they can keep playing the same style. We're going to play aggressively over and over again. That works. What I like about that, though, is they're actually finding these small ways to tweak it. Uh, Ezreal is not the most common AD carry. I know it's a Vasily's champion pool, guys. I realize Vasily plays some Ezreal, but um, just the fact that like Ezreal TF is not a combo we see very often, but it's so good because he's one of the few AD carries, basically like him and Graves, who can actually you reach the target of a TF ult, right? The fact that everyone on that team, Lee Sin, Brahm, Gragas, they can all reach that guy that Xiao Wei Xiao goes and finds, and Xiao Wei Xiao went off to that team. He found so many kills for his team, and the fact that they're finding more ways to express their old play style is awesome. Yeah, and I absolutely love that about LMQ. I was talking to some challenger players, and they were saying my favorite person to have on my team in solo queue is either Vasily or Xiao Wei Xiao. Because even if I go in and I'm being really dumb, they follow me, and it turns out to be a really great play, even though I didn't set it up pro appropriately. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking about that earlier for you and I, just about the fact that they follow the calls. They're 100% yep. committed to being and committing as a team. Uh, the next thing I want to touch on, though, is we look at this TF pick. However, there was a lot of focus on the mid lane by both junglers early in the game. TF got behind. So what, what was the turnaround there that kind of was able, spurred them ahead so that they could take advantage of those global pick potential? Well, I mean, that's the thing with TF is, is he has a reasonable fallback pattern of I'm going to go with Fiends, I'll spam Qs in my lane, I will get some last hits, I'll pick up scraps, I'm down 20 skips at 10, whatever I'll manage, right? Like, whatever you can go through. He played far enough back that Rangar can't force the kills, you know, that, that's all going to work fine. And it's still TF. Just go roam to another lane. Go get Ezreal ahead. You had a gigantic lead in the bottom lane, something like a plus 30 CS lead at some point over, you know, Ezreal over Tristana, which more than compensates for TF's deficit. And it's like, look, if your lane's losing, get out of your lane. It's the same thing with the jungler. You don't gank a losing lane. You gank a winning lane and snowball that ahead, and you just shift your priorities. Yeah, that's just, a, oh, go for it. No, I was about to ahead. say, that's exactly what we saw happen, too. Bjergsen actually hit six first and had about 96 CS at 10 minutes. Hit level six, didn't use his right of the arcane to just, just try and destroy Xiao Wei Xiao in the mid. Xiao Wei Xiao backs, uses his destiny gate, goes bottom, gets himself an assist, sets up that lane. Amazing continues to push the mid lane, and then he starts roaming up top, gives them dragons, gives them all this control. So I think LMQ had complete control of that game from start to finish off of these champion picks and their coordination. And this matchup brings Vasily to 3-0 and against Bjergsen, who was our spring split MVP. Mm -hmm. So my, my next question is, What's what's the deal there, right? Is it is this Bjergsen falling off? Are we watching him, you know, deteriorate or fall from grace, or is it instead that hey, Zhao Wei Zhao, this new guy, the meta's fitting him? What what's going on there? I definitely think Bjergsen is still incredibly skilled, right? You still consider him top three mid laners in North America. In fact, we're seeing him like build the gap over guys like Shifter, where I think it's increasingly apparent that Bjergsen's a better player there. Where I was like, I don't know, maybe Shifter's number one, maybe it's Bjergsen, maybe it's Xiao Wei Xiao. But I think it's very apparent that Bjergsen's still like top two right now. I think he's number two just behind Xiao Wei Xiao. Xiao Wei Xiao actually impressed me so far this split. I knew he was good, but he is clearly incredibly dominant. He's been getting 1v1 kills earlier on. There was like a Ziggs or a uh, like the Yasuo versus Kha'Zix fight. Like in like week two or something, and just time and again, Xiao Wei Xiao is obviously an incredible player, and hey, he's great. That's all I can say. Yeah, so it just speaks to Xiao Wei Xiao's dominance then, his, yeah. his success as a player. Uh, Zyrene, we're going to pull up a little replay here about 13 minutes in around the, the red buff, the northern red buff. If you could just walk me through this as a three-for-one trade here. 
Yeah, and what ends up happening is amazing. He goes in, and he goes in a little too soon without his team. LMQ, they pull an LMQ. TSM tries to pull that strategy where everybody comes in to make it a better play. We're going to start rolling it right now. And Dyrus, he TPs in late. It's a huge part of it. If he had TP'd in about five seconds sooner, it would have been a fantastic play. He ends up getting picked off there. Amazing is no longer involved in this fight. And Xiao Wei Xiao just roams. He walks over, doesn't need a Destiny Gate, and it was on cooldown. And they fight in this horrible passageway and trickle in. Wild Turtle, he started top, looped all the way through the river, and wasn't even a part of that fight till the very end and just added on a little bit of damage. So this is them taking advantage of their mobility as a team having that TF, but then as you said, their their commitment to whatever calls made. We're going yeah. in, we're going hard. Yeah, and yeah. what Freak said on the team comp, everybody can follow it up with those picks. And it's, it's, it's the one difficulty, though, because occasionally you'll see LMQ slip up. Uh, their loss against Cloud9 a few weeks back was the key example of that, where just sometimes they go a little bit too hard, the call is wrong, and about 85% of their calls are correct. But that 15%, if they're wrong and the other team is actually there to defend, they can toss a game away. And that happens every once in a while. That's part of the reason LMQ has a few more losses on the record than maybe they would like. But they're right so darn often that it, in a regular season situation, it's going to work out more often than not. They're in first place. In a best of three or a best of five, it's typically going to pay out as well. And they'll win, I think, really well in the playoffs on top of that. Because, look, they might lose that one game they shouldn't have lost, but they're going to keep winning the ones they're supposed to. All right, well, let's jump into another replay freak that arguably won them the game with those calls right there. The 22-minute dragon fight where they go 3 for 0 and take the Baron off the backside. Yes, this one's weird for TSM because they've got Amazing trying to go for a steal, and he just basically face checks a pink ward. So roll the clip out. They're going to see LMQ set this up, right? They can see Amazing. He's ready to kind of walk forward, and it's just so easy to be like, hey, you know what? Just hit the spells on him and kill him, right? Glacial Fissure. They just all go in right away. More even go, not, uh, No Name goes in, just kick him back to guarantee the one kill. And then it's just a five on four, and they just simply say go, right? Shao Wei Shao TPs into the far back lines, knowing that no one's going to jump onto him. And this is a team comp where they just can keep chasing, keep picking up kills, right? Blow the quote on the first guy, that's fine. I mean, they glacial fissured uh, and Lisa ulted for one person and said, okay, 5v4, just keep going without ults. What I love about the way that LMQ team fights is that they just create chaos, right? So, so often, we saw it in the first game of the day, both teams posture, five against five, and they kind of trade skills back and forth, things like mm -hmm. that. LMQ is like, we're fighting and we're going to fight everywhere. And I'm going to duel you one-on-one -on, -one on the side. I'm going to, you know, we'll have a 3v3 over here. And then Zhao Zhao is going to go through the back. <laughs> like, it's just like, it, it's, they create this chaos, but yeah. they work so well within that chaos. Yeah, and LMQ is never going to run a comp like Curse or Dignitas, in my opinion. It's not their style, because that was kind of a, if you imagine a medieval battle where both sides only has archers and they're just slinging arrows at each other, just hoping the other side would just completely fall down, they're never going to play that. Their archers have swords. They're going to run up. Vasily, Rocket jumps in all of the time, and even if Xiao Wei Xiao is playing a ranged mid laner like TF, he's going to dive you. Right now, he's been practicing a lot of Lucian in solo queue mid lane. I think if he whips that out later on in 4.12, he's just going to be right up in your face, dashing all over the team. That is their style, and they love to go in and make no apologies for their actions either. And there's actually one extra uh, bit to LMQ as well, which I really like. It, it, it kind of rounds them out a little bit. Is they actually do have the ability to play still aggressive, but not divey teams. Like the old standby for this team was like Nidalee Lucian. Yes. Was like, that was their challenger series bread and butter as they made it into the LCS. Was like, that's not a dive team by any stretch of the imagination. Well, maybe New Nidalee is now, but like by any stretch is that not a dive team. But it was still an aggressive team. It was, we're going to show up at one or two items and we're just going mid lane. And you're not going to deal with it because we're better than you and we're going to make better calls in this. But like they always pick aggressive strategies, um, whether they're going for turrets or champions. And again, those work out. So you might see a different style of, of play in terms of champions, right? You might see the pokers, but it is still a team full of aggression and making offensive moves. All right, Freak. Well, talking about team fights, they play CLG tomorrow. One, arguably one of the better team fighting teams. They have great map rotations, things like that. This is to hold on to first place. What do they need to do specifically against CLG to come out that win? Uh, to me, it's basically make sure the double F train doesn't get rolling. Like, CLG right now, they looked really weird in that loss they had earlier today, right? And losing to EG is very strange for a team. Like, it's only happened six times, right? Like, that's, it, it you know, causes you to really look at that when that happens. Um, and I think you just, you keep the double lift train from rolling down the station, and then you're just like, well, Xiao Wei Xiao is going to crush Link. And, like, down the line, like, I just feel like it should just be a match of the LMQ wins. 
Anything to add there, Zarin? No, that's pretty much. Uh, I'm gonna go pink Pokemon on that one and say ditto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's all I got for that. That was so awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for all the insight. We'll see how LMQ does tomorrow. We've got a first place team for the first time, if only for a day. Sure. We'll see. Now we've got to take a break while we set up for our final LCS game of the day: Cloud9 versus Complexity. Don't go anywhere.